Hey everyone, today we're doing lesson 84, degree of equations and solutions to systems of equations. Degree of equations is mostly just a review, so we don't have to worry about that. But we'll slip through it real quick, as quickly as we possibly can. The first thing we need to remember is that we're talking about exponents, but we're talking about exponents of variables. So if we have a 2 here, a 2, it has an exponent of a 1, 2 to the first power is just 2, but there are no variables. So this is a zero degree term. And make sure you get this all in your notes. If we look at x to the third, this would happen to be a third degree term. Obviously. Now this one is a little trickier. We've got a two here, but we cannot forget that each one of these y to the 1, m to the 1, p to the 1, they all count 2. So we have 2, 3, 4, 5. This is a fifth degree term. And 47x, the x has an invisible 1, so this is a first degree term. Okay, make sure, again, get those in your notes as a little reminder. We've talked about it before. Now, when we talk about the degree of a polynomial, because these are just terms, but this polynomial here is a trinomial. It has three terms. Then we are looking at, if you recall, the highest of the exponents. So here, the highest one is 2. So that makes this a second degree polynomial. Hope you can write polynomial with spelling it correctly too, because that's kind of a cool word to spell, just saying. Okay, then x to the third. What do you think this one is going to be? If the highest exponent is 3, it's going to be a third degree polynomial. Here we have x to the 1, y to the 1. So that means in this term, this is going to be a second degree polynomial. And here we have y to the 3x plus 2. That makes this a first degree polynomial. Now, you want to make sure that you take note of a couple of things. Here, this is one term. So each of these counts the same way this one did. 2, 3, 4, 5. Remember when we did that? So we have to do both of these. Here, it's just second because it's, there's only one variable with a, with a, a power of 2. And here is, there's one variable to a power of 3. So you have to be careful about that. Otherwise, we're all good. Let's move on. All right. We know that when you're solving two equations, that there can be one of three answers. And you're going to want this in your notes, too. You can do a real quick uh, drawing if you want to, or you can definitely write down the words. And if you have to pause, by all means, do that. We have three options here. The lines maybe intersect, and if they intersect, what? They have one point in common, so this is number one. They overlap and are the same line. You can't tell from the picture, but there are two lines here, and they have all the same points in common, so this one is number two. And then number three is the lines are parallel, and if they're parallel, it means they never touch, they never cross, they will have no points in common. So there are only three options. They have one, they have all, or they have none. Let's move on. It's interesting to note that we, have, we can see these in our equations, and I'm going to show you in just a moment. When we look at these, though, you need to know that there are different terms. We call 
when it has one solution, so when the lines cross, that is called consistent. That is a consistent system. When we have a solution with none in common, that is called an inconsistent solution. They will never cross. Next is when they share all the same lines. This is a dependent system of equations. And these, these two right here, are called independent. So they can be consistent if it's consistent blah, 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 blah. If it's consistent, it is also independent, and this one is dependent. It's obvious it's dependent because they're the exact same lines. Okay, let's move on. If we look at the equations, and this is always interesting, because the inconsistent independent ones, what do we know about parallel lines? we know that they have the same slope. So when you look at the equations, you don't have to do a lot to solve those unless they're saying, hey, uh, graph these lines. But you know that this is going to be inconsistent. They are never going to touch. They have the same slope, but they cross the y-axis in two different places. So if I was going to draw a quick little sketch of this, I know it's going to cross the y-axis at negative 2 and at 2. And I know that the slope is positive, so it's going to be somewhere along along the lines of this. But it would be more accurate and actually cross at the right place. Obviously, I'm not doing so great with my straight lines here. So let's look at the other ones. If they are exactly the same line, well then what can we tell from these equations? What would happen if we say 2, 2y? Two 2x and a 4. Well, we can divide all of those by 2, right? So that means this goes away, this goes away, and this becomes a 2. So now we have y equals x minus 2, and we have y equals x minus 2. Ha! Same exact line. These are dependent. Now, the consistent independent ones are the ones that are a little bit harder because we have to use elimination or substitution to solve those. So that means if we have, for this one, if y equals x plus 2 and y equals negative 2x plus 1, we know they're both set equal to y, so we could say x plus 2 equals negative 2x minus 1. We're going to find x pretty easy here. I'm going to add... 2x to both sides, so I will have 3x. I'm going to subtract 2, so it's going to equal negative 3, divide by 3, and what is x? x equals negative 1. So I can plug that in here, and what is y? y equals negative 1 plus 2, which is 1. So my x equals negative 1, y equals 1. So the solution where these cross is going to be negative 1, 1. Let's see if I drew my picture any close. No, my picture is not accurate to the solution of that equation. All right, friends, now we're going to move on and we're going to use some of these. The, all we have, there are no examples here in this lesson, so we're going to do the practice problem together. And it says, is the following system of equations consistent in, or inconsistent, dependent, or independent? Well, let's check out what, what, what do we need to do here. Remember when I showed you how to look at the equations and tell? We can eliminate some without doing all the substitution and elimination. Let's just say, we're going to set these all equal to y. So the first one is going to be y equals, I'm just going to move the y over here and move this over here. 
So y equals 3x plus 2. This one down here, hmm, I have, it's in the right order, but it needs to be simplified. What do I see now? y equals 6 divided by 2 is 3x plus 5 over 2. What does that tell us? What do we have here? We have exactly the same slope, but we have different places where we cross the y-axis. We have different y-intercepts. What happens if we have the same slope? Ah, look at this. The same slope means that they're parallel lines and they're inconsistent. So that means the answer to this is they are parallel, they are inconsistent, and that means they are independent. Two big words that start with an I. All right, that's it, my friends. That's as easy as that one is. And I don't know if they're going to ask you to do anything. Um, I suppose I could peek at the homework. Mm -hmm. No, I don't see where it's saying. Is it inconsistent or consistent? I see. Just solve these. Ooh, you might just have to do it. Okay, but that's all there is to that, and we will talk to you tomorrow for Lesson 85. I uh, hope everything's going great. If not, give me a holla. Bye.